Hi. Now I'm often asked why does y equal minus f of x reflect the graph of y equals f of x in the x-axis and why does y equals f of minus x reflect the graph of y equals f of x in the y-axis? Well to answer that question what I've done here is just sketched a general graph of the form y equals f of x. But this could apply to any graph not just this one. Okay, So what I've done here is I've built up a table of values for x going from minus 4 to 4 and what we need to do is just fill in the corresponding y values for this graph say. So when x is 4 f of 4 when x is 4 f of 4 will give us the y value so y value here would be f of 4 and what is it? Well according to the graph here you can see that when you take x is 4 you get a y value of 3. And if we do another one when x is 3 sub it into here and you've got the y value for f of 3 and you can see from the graph that f of 3 is 1 so we'll put that in as f of 3 equals 1. And if we did this for all the other values along here, then you would get a series of values like this. Now, you can check those and uh, see if you get the same results as I do. Basically, they're the coordinates of all these black dots that you see here on the graph. Now, Let's start to look at y equals minus f of x and explore what that means. Well, if we were to draw up a table y equals minus f of x, then we need to fill in some of the corresponding y values for these x coordinates. So let's start with the 4 again here. So if x is 4, and we put it in here, the y value would be minus what you get for f of 4. So minus f of of 4. Well we saw earlier that f of 4 was 3. You can see it from the graph as well. When x is 4 the y value is 3. But what we're doing now is negating, putting a minus sign in front of our y value. So instead of the y value being plus 3 it is now minus 3. It's down here. f of 4 was 3 so if you put a minus in front you're going to get minus 3. There you go, so we've got equals minus 3. Just squeeze it in there. And let's plot that coordinate. When x is 4, we now have a y coordinate of minus 3. So you can see that that point becomes mirrored in the x axis. And let's try it for another point. Let's say when x is 2. This is a special point. When x is 2, y would be minus f of 2, so that would be minus f of 2. And what was f of 2? Well f of 2 was a point on the x-axis. Its y coordinate was 0. Putting a minus in front of 0 is not going to change it. It's still going to be 0. So we call this point an invariant point. It stays put on the x-axis. Let's have a look at another one. 1. When x is 1. When x is 1 y would be minus f of 1, minus f of 1. And what was f of 1? Well, f of 1 was negative 1. So if we negate that, we've got minus minus 1, which is plus 1. And that point gets mirrored above the x-axis. So any points below the x-axis get mirrored above, any points on the x-axis stay put, and any points above the x-axis get mirrored below. Well, if you were to work out all the other points, then you'd have a table like this. And again, you can check those points, and if you were to plot the coordinates of those points, they would become like this, and you can start to see the outline of the graph. Well, if we were to draw that graph in, you'd get that. And that represents a reflection in the x-axis of the graph of y equals f of x. So this graph then is y equals minus f of x. Well, to show this one, we basically do exactly the same again. 
we start with the table of values x going from minus 4 to 4 and what we need to do now is just work out the corresponding y coordinates for a few of these x coordinates now I've picked a few uh, that I think are important to show first of all so let's take when x is minus 4 when x is minus 4 you're going to have the y value now is f of minus minus 4 so that becomes f of 4 and what was f of 4? f of 4 you'll notice was up here a value of 3 or you could have got it from here the table but it's 3 whatever and so if we plot that point minus 4 3 when x is minus 4 the corresponding y value is 3 up here can you see how this point got mirrored across the y-axis to this place? Let's try it for another one. Let's try for x is minus 2. Then what we're going to have is the corresponding y-value is going to be f of minus minus 2, which is f of 2. And what was f of 2? Well, f of 2 was 0. You can see up here in the graph as well. So that's going to be 0. And if we plot that point, we're plotting it at the point where x is minus 2. Minus 2, 0. So you can see how that point got mirrored across. And if you do it for another point, minus 1, you're going to have y is f of minus minus 1, f of 1. And f of 1, you could see, was a point below the x-axis, had a y-coordinate, a minus 1. So this is going to be minus 1. And when you come to plot that one, you're going to have minus 1, 1. And what about a point on the y-axis? This is very important that you remember this concept. When you have points on the y-axis, that's when x is 0. y would be f of minus 0, which is still f of 0. And what was f of 0? Well, it was this point here. X, the, when x was 0, y was minus 1. So you get back the same point. And that's very important to remember because any point on the y-axis stays the same, remains invariant. OK, well I've selected a few key points in this. If you were to fill in the other values, this is what you would have. And if you were to plot the remaining coordinates, you'd get a series of blue points like this okay and join them up and what this hopefully demonstrates is that you get a reflection of y equals f of x in the y-axis and there it is there so this is the graph then of y equals f of minus x a reflection then in the y-axis and this would be true for any graph of the form y equals f of x. OK, well, I hope that gives you some idea of how these transformations work, OK, why they work. And that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.